Hello, and welcome to the Matt Yasa channel. So I'll attempt to demonstrate the wigwag technique today. I've opened up this blow tube and I'm prepping it to attach to lined tubing. It's the same tube from the hourglass video and it still has that bridge connection on it. But I wanna leave it on, that way you can better track how the tube rotates. Nice even rotations are not only important for even heating, but also to keep your work from slumping over from gravity. And I'll give it one more flare with my large jacks before I connect up to the tubing. And so I want a nice solid connection here. I'm gonna heat up both edges, very, very molten, very hot, and connect them in the flame. I connected it a little bit off center. So I'm gonna just heat up the area again, kind of keep rotating and pull and try to bring it back on center. And now for the other side, I'm gonna pull out a little bit of glass to clean up the edge. It's a little bit jagged, so I wanna make it nice and even all the way around so it connects up without leaving a hole. Now I'll heat it to molten and contract it down and then flare it back open with my jacks. Contracting and expanding the glass is the natural way to even out the walls or wall thickness to make sure that the glass is evenly thick all the way around. A lot of times that's when you run into cracks and problems in your project. The thinner areas will want to cool a little bit quicker than the thicker ones. So as one side starts to contract, the other one doesn't and it causes a good deal of stress. And so I'll go ahead and adjust to a smaller, finer flame and start to heat up a nice thin band of glass. And now that it's molten, I'm gonna begin to slow down one of my hands, kind of drag it a little bit on the tube. This causes the other hand to rotate a little bit more, making a slight twist in the lines. So I guess this would be the first half of the pattern, the wig. Next up will be the wag. And so the wig wag is very iconic in the glass community. It's a very popular, very recognized image. Now when and where it originates from, I'm not entirely sure. I wanna say it's probably a more recent American technique, but that's not to say that line working in general originates from America. It most likely originates from Italy where they make what's called cane, and then they'll do different lined techniques like the reticello. And now it's very important to allow your last twist to cool a little bit and solidify before you go into your next one or else you'll just end up untwisting the first one. So I'm giving it about a minute or so in between each twist. I don't want it to come all the way back down to room temperature. I still want it to be a bit hot. So with that band of even heat, I'll go ahead and give it a slight twist for another curve. So I'm not twisting my lines too much here. I know some people might prefer longer twists. I'm going only about one fourth around the tube. So if you imagine a clock face, I'm only going from the 12 to the three. You might be able to take the line all the way to the opposite side of the tube. So from like 12 to six. Although I think the most important aspect would just be to keep the wigs and wags the same size and the same distance apart too. And so while I was working on this project, I thought I would post up a little riddle for what it was. An instrument of ancient times used to ensure straighter lines. And the answer is the plumb bob. In construction, the plumb bob is a leveling tool. It's hung from the top of the building or wall or board and used with gravity to ensure that it is standing up straight. 
So if it's hung about three inches from the wall at the top and you measure it at the base and it's hanging six inches away, that means your wall is leaning inward. But then in the reverse scenario, if you hang it three inches from the top and it's leaning against the wall at the bottom, that means your wall is falling outward. So it's mainly just a weight that points down towards the center of the earth. And so of course that's why I made up this project. It's uh, very paradoxical. The wigwag is all about making curvy wavy lines while the plumb bob is the opposite. It kind of reminds me of my glass cannon. That's one of the more paradoxical ones. You normally don't think of something made of glass to be able to withstand a cannon blast. So I'm gonna get back to the point of it here, the termination point. It's very important to pull all these lines together because it often becomes the focal point of the piece. It's the first place people will look, especially if you're planning to blow the wigwag out later into a sphere, which is pretty popular to do, but I'm gonna save that for another video, I think. And so I'm gonna go into this slightly larger tubing. It has a lot of cadmium color in it, some yellow and orange. I was discussing cadmium colors in the last video. They boil at a lower temperature, so you normally have to be a little extra careful. This tubing has a coating of clear on the outside, so I shouldn't have a problem with boiling, but you'll notice those yellows changing to red. Just temporary though. So I was also planning to use the rods from the last video to make some line tubing, but it didn't quite turn out like I wanted. It wasn't as clean and straight as these lines here. So that's why I wanted to stick with this tubing just to give you a proper demonstration. Which is working really well. That's why I bought it was for wigwag practice. And although the shape of the tubing and the lines are very well made, I'm not a big fan of the color or at least the saturation. The cadmiums could be a little bit brighter. I'm not sure if it's been pulled out a little bit too much or if it's just not as a high quality colored rod. For me, when it comes to the products I make, uh, especially the ones I sell, I like to use the highest quality material. I want my customers to have the best experience they can, you know, be the most satisfied with their product. And I apply that same analogy to the YouTube channel here. I think it's important to focus on higher quality content, you know, something that lasts. It does take a little bit more work, uh, especially in the start, but in the longer run of things, there's a lot more payback in the end. You know, people are more willing to come back and check those older videos out. Whoops, I broke my blow tube off there. When I attached it the first time, it must've been a little bit too cold. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reheat both ends and reattach it very hot and molten this time. Now cracks and breaks definitely are a part of the process. It's good to learn how to prevent them from happening, but of course also learning how to continue from that mistake. But I do like to say when you're having to force something, it's always better to use more heat than more force. By adding more force on the glass, you risk breaking it and causing an injury. So it's always good to heat it up a little bit more instead. And so I was thinking, I'm not actually sure how many wigs or wags you need before it's technically a wig wag. A single wig and a wag would just be a bump. It's really the pattern of them that make the whole thing come together. I'm thinking maybe at least three. Three should make a good wig wag. But if you would like to do your own wig wag practice with tubing like this one, I'll be going over how to make it in the next video. It's called the vac stack method. I'm gonna have to make a small vacuum pump system to get it going. But now one last detail I missed on the first one I did. The end of the tube and the top of the tube isn't lined up. So I'm gonna heat up this last wag here and correct that. If you look from one blow tube to the other, the lines go straight through with that wig wag centered right in the middle.
The next step would be to heat up a large band and to pull out the bottom of the plumb bob. This will be the point which points towards the floor. I'm going to pull it apart very straight. I don't want to twist the lines up. And I'm also going to take my time with the pull, kind of do it very slowly. I want it a bit longer than I did the first one. So I hope you're liking the video so far. If so, go ahead and leave a comment, hit the like button. You can subscribe to the channel if you're new, that always helps. But if you're looking for another way to help support the channel and help support me with what I do here, I've come up with an idea for a product to sell on my Etsy account. So basically people are starting to turn away from plastic products especially disposable ones like plastic silverware, cups and straws. And a lot of the reason for the waste factor of them, I just kind of use them once and throw them away, but then also for a fear of the chemicals in the plastic kind of contaminating your food or drink. And I know it's probably not that bad of an issue, but I know there's definitely some truth to it. I remember when I was younger, those cheaper thermoses or water bottles, after your water has been sitting in there all day, it just have a weird taste to it. And so a long story short, I'm going with reusable glass straws. I remember looking before and there's already a lot of people selling glass straws made of borosilicate. And so for myself, since I do work with borosilicate, I do know it is quite a bit safer than normal soda glass which is what most glass is made out of, windows and mirrors and uh, even drinking glasses. When it breaks or chips, the edges aren't quite as sharp. It also won't break into as many pieces. It usually prefers to stay in larger chunks. But with that said, it is still glass. And if I would throw it into a cup and break it and suck it up, that's kind of a scary thing. But then, quartz went on sale for 50% off. Quartz is even harder and more durable than borosilicate. It's almost the way how boro is compared to soda lime is how quartz is compared to boro. It's like the next step up. So I've only ordered a small batch of quartz. I'm gonna do a little test run first to see how it goes. Be a limited supply. But if it works out, I'm thinking maybe three straws to a pack, probably eight to nine inches. Maybe I'll put in a slightly bent one, an angled one. I'm not sure, I'll have to see how it works on the torch too. And also I'm probably gonna charge just a little bit higher than the competitor's price, just because of how expensive quartz is compared to borosilicate. It's normally for me about six to seven times the price of good quality Bora. So I'm excited to see how this will work. And I also have some other plans for the quartz as well. And that would be science related plans, of course. All right, and now that I've got my third and final one all wigged and wagged up, it's time to finish off the tip and then I can open up the holes at the top. And those will be the holes to hang the string. The string is probably the more important aspect of the plumb bob functionality. The plumb bob is merely just a hanging weight, so the shape of it's not as important, but I really like this one. I think if you've got a plumb bob something, you might as well do it with style. Now I'm covering up my first hole with this rod. That way I have pressure to pop out the second one. I'll heat up both the holes and flare them open a little bit larger with my mini jacks. Slowly heat up right above those holes and start to pull out the top of it. It's kind of the same idea with the bottom part, but not as long. I don't want it to be top heavy. And the tool I'm using to hold on to the bottom right now are called the claw grabbers. 
but it can be very useful for grabbing onto your work to do the finishing touches without leaving any marks like a punty would. Now I'm just gonna heat up the tip, kind of point it down at an angle and rotate, and this will marver it out into a nice point. And next to finish up the tinier one, I actually found it to be a little bit easier to work on, a little less time consuming, since I didn't have to wait as long for it to cool down and heat up. But then at the same time, it was a little harder to keep it centered, so a little easier and a little harder. And I'm not sure what you would build to need such a small plumb bob. I'll probably just hang it from my rear view mirror. It looks pretty cool. And so here I'm just pulling out a little bit of glass. The walls are a little bit too thick to blow a hole. Pulling glass from that one spot to just thin up that area. That way I can blow it out in the flame. So I've got both the holes blown open. I'm just going in with the mini jacks to flare them open a little bit larger for the string. And that's looking pretty good. It was important for this project to get those holes lined up also, just so that it would hang straight down and look very balanced. So I'll finish the tip on this one, get it in the kiln at 1050 for about 30 minutes. And hopefully as it's cooling down, it won't explode. Wigwag Plum Bob, complete. And so this is a simple demonstration of one way to use your plumb bob. If I compare the distance from the board at the top of the string to the bottom of the string, and they look about the same, that will indicate that your board is plumb, or standing straight up. If I tilt the board and measure it again, comparing the top to the bottom, you can see there is a little bit of a difference. That's telling me that the board is at a slight slant. When I tilt the board in the other direction, you can see the same thing happens. And I think that'll do it for this episode on the Matt Yasa channel. Thank you for joining me on this wigwag adventure. Join me in the next video to check out how to make line tubing. But until then, stay melty.